Hi, I'm Ed from edthorn.com here to help you guys make the most out of your home studios. Now, Sonox have just released a very exciting new EQ plugin, which I think could be quite game-changing in terms of how we approach our mixers. It's really been designed to help and speed up our workflow in an intuitive way whilst helping us make informed decisions with a lot of really quite creative tools. Now, if you head on over to the Sonox website, they do have a walkthrough video, which is a quite a thorough tutorial on how the plugin works, what it has to offer, with some audio examples. And you may recognize a familiar face in that video. But in this video, I wanted to just highlight some of the features that I think are particularly good, give my opinions on the plugin, and also some slightly different audio examples. Let's dive into Logic and see Claro, the new EQ plugin from Sonox in action. All right, so here we are in Logic for a session I'm working on at the moment, and we're gonna pull Claro up on, on the master bus. The first thing you'll notice is there's three windows, Produce, Tweak, and Mix. The Produce tab has been purposefully limited to a set of three parametric EQs for broad strokes EQ. The idea of this plugin is to be used on every channel and bus, and even the master bus, from start to finish and the tools get progressively more precise and detailed as we go through the plugin. But at the start, it just wants us to do broad strokes just to get a rough tone, and the idea is that you then move on quickly onto the next part of your music production. Getting into good habits with music production rather than getting bogged down in little details You'll notice that each parametric has preset frequency points. These have been taken off popular analog uh, EQs as popular starting points. And we simply select one of those and we can uh, cut and boost the frequencies there using this wheel here. Now, if you want to further fine tune the parametric and the frequency position, each of these parametrics is connected to a slider here to further fine tune our parameters. Now, whatever EQ settings we make in Produce view will be viewable in Tweak view. We just need to turn that on in Tweak view. And there we have it there. That is boosted as we boosted in Produce. And if we reduce that and go back to Produce, you'll see that I've then pulled all of that out. You'll also notice there's some descriptive words at the top. And we have these in Tweak view as well. Descriptive words at the top for positive um, descriptions of our audio and some more negative descriptions at the bottom as well. And now the reason these are useful are if you're sat in a room with a client who doesn't necessarily know what a nasal frequency is or, you know, like 1.6 kilohertz in a vocal, but knows that it sounds a bit nasally, they can say, mm, sounds a bit nasally and you can just pull it out there and, and, you know, they have an understanding of what that means without necessarily needing to know what the frequencies are. So if you're new to music production, you can use these words to, to navigate learning the frequencies and learning the music production terminology. In Produce View, there are two tabs. There's the Tone tab, which is for your global EQing of your audio source. We then have a Width tab, which is used for EQing and controlling the size of the, the stereo image of that channel, and we can control the mid and the sides of this. Also in Tweak View, we have all the professional tools you could possibly wish for, including things that will rival the FabFilter Q3. And this plugin takes that concept and goes a lot further with it, as you'll see later in the video. But we have our cuts, our shelves, and our bells. We also have our left, right, stereo, mid, and side processing capabilities. And we can also split the signal, which could be quite useful for mastering, if we wanted to say EQ, the mids on the left or the mids on the right differently. Now, one thing I like about Claro is that Tweak View displays a spectral analyzer that changes its detail and reaction speed to how wide our cue points are. For example, if I set a really wide cue point, it'll have a really broad, slow overall general EQ response. But if I narrow that cue point, the detail in the analyzer will get a lot more detailed and quicker to respond to our changes. Watch this. Mm -hmm. 
And you'll notice as well, there were lighter blue bands coming up and being highlighted. Those are displaying where there are particularly prominent resonances. Now this was on a master bus, but this was, would be quite useful on specific channels as well. So on the master bus, it gives me an indication of where there are frequencies. So I can think, okay, there's a strong frequency resonance at 100. That's likely to be in the bass guitar or possibly the drums. So I can go in, and apply this plugin to those and then use those in the mix section, which we'll talk a little bit about later on, just to uncover where the masking is going on in the entire mix. Going back into produce view, and there's another spectral analyzer in this view as well. Just gonna lower my master bus so I can talk over it so we can see it going on. But if we're in tone view, you can see how there's uh, highlights going on here. And what that's doing is highlighting where in the frequency response there is prominent frequencies. The, the brighter and the thicker the uh, blue colors there, the blue highlights, the more frequency information there is resonating at those frequencies. For example, there's a lot, as we just mentioned, at 100, and there's barely anything, if nothing, at 10 and 30 kilohertz there. Now, if we go to the width tab, there's a similar spectral analyzer, and this is analyzing the stereo width of the track. Again, the lighter and the more prominent the um, highlights there, the more stereo imaging there is at those frequencies. So for example, again, there's, there's a quite a lot going on at 100 there. So I might wanna tweak that by putting in a high pass filter there to mono the low end. And as you can see now, there's nothing below 100, which is quite good. Now what I can do is set this to a really sharp shelf of 120, which is gonna be like a brick wall filter and immediately under 376 there, there is nothing in the frequency response. In the stereo image that is. So that's really monoing the low end below 162 there. Alternatively, you'll see that there's not much going on at 30K, for example, if I want that, I can simply put on a shelf, boost all that, uh, maybe boost the parametric there, and you can see that some high-end harmonic content, ha some high-end stereo content is coming into the display there. Now, Claro also features auto gain. There are other plugins that feature auto gain, but instead of compensating the output against a default pink noise curve like the other plugins, Claro actually considers the tonal signature of the track, and your track will maintain its level regardless of whether you're cutting or boosting frequencies. For example, on this string line here, I'm gonna cut and boost some frequencies. Keep an eye on the meters to the left, and this is gonna be without auto gain first. So you're gonna see some boost in the level as I boost the EQ. And as I'm dropping the level there, you're hearing a reduction in the volume. Let's set that back to normal and impose auto gain. So you can hear that the, the EQ is changing, but the overall output level isn't. And this is actually affecting the EQ differently to a standard linear EQ would do. It's almost like working with a multi-band compressor where you're dropping those frequencies out and then the rest are, are allowed to come up into the mix. I think this is really useful and uh, particularly impressive on the strings as you could hear. Moving on to the final view mode, and this is where this plugin gets very interesting. By assigning multiple instances of Claro onto different channels, we can link the EQ and assess how all of the tracks are working in relation to each other. To do this quickly in Logic, simply select multiple tracks in the mixer view and add Claro to one of them. The channel list on the left hand side is all the channels, buses and effects buses I have assigned Claro to. 
By dragging and dropping a channel or bus into the top and bottom windows on the right, I can directly assess their EQ relationship. The top window becomes our reference track, which also can be selected by clicking the gold stars next to the channel or bus name in the left window. Claro will highlight clashing frequencies in yellow. This is representing where frequency overlaps or spectral masking is occurring and will help us make informed decisions which frequencies to cut or boost on that channel. The bottom window is the working channel and the one we want to process in more detail once we've spotted any masking. We have access to all our processing tools within this window so we don't need to leave the plugin to affect changes across the different channels. The Invert EQ button is especially useful because you can choose to cut the EQ on one channel and Claro will automatically boost the same EQ band on another channel. For example, how I've done with the keyboards and the guitar buses here to try and create them some separation in the mid-range. Another feature I really like in Claro is the ability to isolate the frequency band you're processing and listening to it in solo by pressing option and clicking on the frequency band. And you can also do this by clicking on the headphone button below here. Annoyingly, what you can't do at this stage, though, is boost the gain at those frequencies or boost the parameters. You can only adjust the frequency. I'd like Sonox to implement this if they could at some point. Speaking of things this plugin can't do, the plugin isn't set up for dynamic EQ processing. Shame, it's the first thing that I asked Sonox when I was on the phone to them, and for a variety of reasons uh, I won't go into, it's not been able to be implemented on this version of the plugin. However, I would not be surprised if it was implemented into the next iteration of this plugin. And stay tuned for that update because when this plugin can do dynamic processing, it is going to be the best EQ plugin on the market and the only plugin you will need from start to finish in your projects. So what are my overall thoughts on the plugin? I think it's fantastic. It does everything that you need to do. The fact that you can use it at the beginning of a mix and link it on all the channels and all the all the instances of Claro communicate. And in the mix view, you can see where you've got problem frequencies overlapping, where you've got ma masking occurring. It gives you so much power and so much information to be able to choose where to cut or boost frequencies on the different channels. The fact that you can link channels, buses, and your master bus, and effects buses as well, which I haven't done in this video, but you can do, just to see where all the EQs are sitting and where all the instruments are sitting. It's so powerful. It is potentially the only EQ plugin you're going to need. Now, in terms of not having dynamic EQ for yet for, for now that is a bit of a shame uh, and that is potentially where the fab filter q3 is going to be useful but the fab filter q3 doesn't talk to other instances of the plugin this does and that makes it game changing and that is why i'm so excited about this plugin so go and check out my full walkthrough on the sonox website i'll link that in the description below leave your thoughts and comments on this video subscribe and like and all that rubbish if you haven't already in the meantime it's been emotional thanks for watching and hopefully i'll get this song out at some point uh, and i'll see you on the next one